welcome to today's live Zoo to You. I'm Katie, one of the educators here at Stone Zoo. Today I'm joined by Jen, who's behind the camera. Hi everyone. And today I'm so excited to be talking all about some animals here at the zoo that are near and dear to my heart, and those are creepy crawlies. Now before we get started, just remember if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comment section of our video and we'll do our best to answer them towards the end. Um, so we're going to be meeting three different species today and talking a little bit about their adaptations. And before we meet our first species, I want to see if anyone who's watching at home can possibly guess who we're going to be meeting. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about her first. Her name is Charlotte, she's around 10 years old, and her species is actually known for being really great mothers. Moms will fiercely defend their eggs and their babies until their babies are big enough to fend for themselves. And this species actually plays a really important role in their ecosystem. They are a natural form of pest control. They are insect eaters, and a lot of the insects they like to eat are considered to be pests to humans, especially agricultural pests. So farmers really like to have them around because they're eating all of the pests that are eating the farmer's crops. So we'll see if anybody has some guesses. I'll give you a second to get them in. And then we're going to meet Charlotte up close. Now she's going to be staying in this container just to make sure she's nice and safe. But Jen's gonna move the camera closer so we can get a good look at her. So this is Charlotte, and she is our 10-year-old Chilean rose-haired tarantula. Females can live to be to around 15 to 20 years. Males don't live quite as long as females, but it is a really long time for a small arachnid. And tarantulas are arachnids, which means that they have eight legs. They also have two feeding appendages towards her mouth there. Those will help her grab onto food and eat it. And they have two body segments. So their first body segment right here is called the cephalothorax. And that is where their eight legs are connected. And then their second body segment right here is their abdomen. And their abdomen has two little appendages on the back of it. They kind of look like antenna or tentacles, but those are actually their spinnerets. And spinnerets are what produce silk, and they can make different types of silk depending on what its use is. Now you might also notice that Charlotte is super hairy. Tarantulas are covered in hairs, and those hairs on their bodies have different uses. So some hairs might be used for sensing vibrations, or scents, or even temperatures. And the hairs on the underside of their abdomen are irritating hairs, and that's actually how tarantulas will defend themselves. If they do feel threatened, they'll actually rear up on their hind legs and they can flick out those hairs on their abdomen and they can get into a predator's eyes. They're really itchy and irritating um, and that's how they'll stay safe. Now tarantulas can bite. They do have a mouth and they do have fangs. They don't have a lot of venom. So their bite would be the equivalent of like a bee sting really. So enough to hurt somebody, but not to seriously hurt or injure them. Um, but that is just another form of defense. They are also super fragile, which is why Charlotte is kind of staying in her little portable tank here. She's really, really fast. And just to make sure she stays nice and safe, she's in here. But we do have something interesting to show all of you at home. And this is Charlotte's most recent mold. So tarantulas do molt their exoskeleton. That's just how they grow bigger. And they'll shed that old skeleton and it basically looks like another spider. Um, so you can see those two pedipalps really closely. Those are their feeding appendages. And on their abdomen, you can also see her eye cluster. So that's where her eyeballs were, which is really cool. And those two spinnerets right at the bottom. And that's how they're going to make webs. Now we're going to meet another arachnid, and this species is not as well known as tarantulas. We're going to be meeting Vinny the vinegaroon. Vinegaroons are a species of whiptail scorpion. So they're not a true scorpion, and they don't have stingers like a scorpion does. 
Instead, they have another really cool defense. So we'll see Vinny up close. I'll move his little rock. So vinegaroons, like I said, they are arachnids, so they do have eight legs. But if you're looking at Vinny, you might only count one, two, three. They have three legs for walking on each side. And then on each side of their body, they also have this really long leg that looks a little bit like an antenna. And that's a modified leg used for feeling. They don't have the best eyesight. They're primarily nocturnal. So they'll use those modified legs to feel around and get a good sense of where they are and to help them find their food. They also have pedipalps just like the tarantulas and with vinegaroons, they're modified to be almost like a pinching claw. So that's how they can defend themselves and it's also how they can grab onto their food. This species is found in the Southwestern United States down into Mexico and they're mostly found in dry arid areas like deserts or shrubby grasslands and they're usually found in a layer of leaf litter or under some rocks and things like that. So they will blend in, They'll kind of burrow under that leaf litter looking for food like snails, slugs, and other insects. And that's how they're going to stay safe from possible predators. Now we learned that tarantulas have irritating hairs to help them defend themselves, but whiptail scorpions have another really cool, interesting defense mechanism. If they do feel threatened, um, sometimes predators can be animals like coyotes, foxes, armadillos they actually will whip this tail around which is how they get that name whip tail scorpion and they release this super stinky smell it is around 85 percent acetic acid which is basically vinegar that's how they also get the name vinegaroon it's really smelly and it's also really irritating to predators it can get in their eyes and their noses and it hopefully gives the vinegaroon enough time to get away safely and to find somewhere else that is predator free to be. Now our last critter we're going to be meeting is actually one that I'm going to hold and this is going to be the only six-legged friend that we're meeting today. So this is our insect we'll be meeting. And this is Thor. Thor, you might have heard him hiss. I don't know if the phone was able to pick up that noise, but Thor is a Madagascar hissing cockroach and he's around two years old. In human care, Madagascar hissing cockroaches can live to be two to five years, which is a really long time for an insect. And in their natural habitat, they'll really only live up to 18 months. So just like their name implies, they are native to Madagascar. In fact, they're an endemic species, which means that is the only place in the whole world where you can find them. And a lot of people don't like cockroaches because they associate them with being pests in our homes. There are over 4,000 different species of cockroaches and only around 30 of those species are considered to be pests to people. So you would not find a Madagascar hissing cockroach as a pest in your home. It's way too cold here in Massachusetts. They really need a hot and humid environment, just like the rainforest of Madagascar to live in. And in the rainforest, they're found along the forest floor, kind of similar to the vinegaroons. And they'll also be found under some leaf litter and under logs. So their body colorings are different shades of brown and black to help them blend in really, really well. And they live in large colonies. Now, also like their name implies, they do make a hissing noise. In fact, they're the only insect species that can make this noise in this fashion. They make that noise by releasing air really quickly out of these holes on their abdomen called spiracles. And with Thor, you can actually see those spiracles. They're these darker dots on his abdomen. When they're threatened, they can release air really, really quickly and that's what makes that hissing noise. So that's how they defend themselves. Other animals might hear that noise and think it could be a dangerous animal like a snake. And hopefully that gives the cockroaches some time to get away to safety. Now they also play a really important role in their ecosystem. They are herbivores and they're scavengers. So they're really going to be eating all of the leftover plant material. So old rotting fruits and leaves that fall to the forest floor, all of those things would just build up in the forest if it weren't for decomposers 
like Madagascar hissing cockroaches. They'll go along the forest floor, they'll eat all of that gross, old, rotting fruit, and they turn that into super poop. Their poop is just like a plant fertilizer. It adds nutrients back into the soil and it helps more trees grow in the rainforest. And that's really important. Those trees are providing habitats to other species, food for other animals, and trees also give us oxygen, which we need to breathe. So even though these are really small insects, they have lots of really important roles and roles that even help people. Now, one more thing I want to point out about Thor is if we can take a close-up look at his legs. They're super spiky. They don't hurt my fingers at all. It's really like Velcro, and that helps them hold on really well. He can actually hold on upside down, which is really cool. And we know Thor is a male because of these two bumps on top of his back. A lot of people think those are their eyeballs. Those are not their eyes. Those are called horns. Males have horns, females do not, and males will use those for fighting each other. They'll fight over territories. They'll also fight over females. So it's a really easy way to tell males and females apart. If you're curious where his eyes are, his face is actually right down here. His two antenna right there. Now, should we see if we have some questions that I can answer? Yeah, so I know we have some questions about the tarantula. Okay. Um, so going back to that, uh, Danielle wants to know if she has poison. She has venom. So the difference between poison and venom is really how the other animal gets sick. So poisonous animals, you would have to either ingest or lick them for you to feel sick. Venom has to be injected into you through a bite or a sting. So some species of spiders and snakes are venomous because they can inject that through a bite. Other animals might be poisonous, like a poison dart frog, and you would actually have to eat them to get that poison. So she does have some venom. It's not enough to seriously hurt a person. It would really just feel like a bee sting. All right, Christine, uh, again, going back to the tarantula, would like to know if you can hold her. You can hold some species of tarantulas. We don't hold Charlotte just because she is really fragile. They might look really heavy, but they're really light. She's also really, really fast. So just for her own safety, we don't like to hold or handle her that much. Um, so it just keeps her nice and safe. Jimmy wants to know if they live in the US, the tarantulas. The tarantulas, they don't. Uh, Chilean rose-haired tarantulas only live in Chile. Uh, Anthony would like to know, is growth the only reason that tarantulas molt? That's a good question, Anthony. I believe so. I know snakes will shed their skin for other reasons, but I believe molting is only done with tarantulas so they can grow bigger, but I could be wrong on that. And he would also like to know what we feed our arachnids at the zoo. That's a great question. So our arachnids are insectivores. They eat insects. So Charlotte actually gets fed crickets and mealworms depending on the day. Right. How about the cockroaches? What do we feed those guys? The cockroaches actually get monkey biscuits, which are the same dried food we feed a lot of primates here at the zoo, but they also get fresh produce, so they'll get fresh sweet potatoes, greens, and apples. Uh, MP would like to know, is there an oil a -roon? <laughs> There is not an oil a -roon, but it would make a pretty good salad dressing. Uh, with the vinegaroon also, uh, Maya was wondering where the eyes were on it. Oh, that's a great question, and actually one I didn't address. So their eyes are on top of their head, and they have eight eyeballs. So they have two in the middle of their head, and then three on either side. Julie would like to know, have you ever smelled the vinegaroon? I have smelled the vinegaroon <laughs> once or twice, and it does smell just like you took the cap off a bottle of vinegar. All right, and we'll do maybe one more question. Um, are any of these species endangered that you know of? These species are not endangered. There are some species of insects that are becoming endangered or threatened with becoming endangered. So one thing that you can do around your homes to protect lots of insects is to decrease your use of pesticides, maybe use some natural forms of pest control, and that helps lots of insects that live right here in Massachusetts. 
Well, we're just about all out of time. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you are able to donate to our All for Animals Fund in honor of Giving Tuesday now, you can find that link on our Facebook page as well as our website, zoonewengland.org. Make sure to check back tomorrow at 1.30 for another Zoo to You where we will be sharing different videos and activities. Thanks for tuning in.